One of the great privileges of being Prime Minister is working closely with the senior commanders of uh, our armed forces. It really has been an honour for me to work closely with Mark Binskin, uh, the Chief of the Defence Force, uh, earlier with General David Hurley. And uh, obviously I've worked very closely with uh, uh, Air Marshal Jeff Brown and General David Morrison, the retiring Chiefs of Air Force and Army. And I'll have a little bit more to say about them uh, in a few moments. Uh, but uh, today it uh, is my honour and privilege uh, to announce the new Chiefs of Army and of Air Force, uh, Lieutenant General Angus Campbell, DSC AM, uh, will take up his role as Chief of Army from the 16th of May, and Air Vice Marshal Gavin Davis, uh, AO, a CSC, uh, will take up his new role as Chief of the Air Force from the 4th of July, uh, and he'll also be promoted uh, to Air Marshal. Um, General Campbell uh, is probably reasonably familiar to you as the head of Operation Sovereign Borders over the last couple of years, and he's done exceptional work in this very difficult job. Um, Air Vice Marshal Gavin Davies has obviously uh, been a pilot of distinction. Uh, he's had uh, more recently a series of senior commands, including senior roles uh, in our air operations uh, in the Middle East. So I think we're very lucky to have two outstanding officers taking on these vital roles in our Defence Force. I uh, should uh, say a few words about uh, General David Morrison, who has been a groundbreaking, pathfinding uh, Chief of Army. Uh, he is a soldier's soldier, but he's also been a modern soldier's soldier who's very much wanted the Army to move into the modern world. And, uh, no one who saw his uh, uh, famous uh, talk uh, to the Defence Forces, uh, uh, the standard you walk past is the standard you accept, uh, will ever doubt his commitment to making our army a modern as well as an effective fighting force. Uh, Jeff Brown has been Chief of Air Force at a time when our Air Force has never been more capable. Uh, we have a strong air component uh, in the Middle East right now, uh, which is operating very effectively and at high intensity. And the interesting thing about our air deployment to the Middle East is it's the first time in our history that we have deployed so far in an entirely self-contained way. Uh, thanks to aerial, aerial refuelling, our Super Hornets flew um, themselves uh, from Australia. Uh, to the Middle East via Diego Garcia, and it was a wholly Australian operation. We didn't need anyone else's help uh, to make this happen, and uh, as well as our Super Hornets, we've also got our refueller uh, and our uh, airborne control uh, craft, which uh, are making a marvellous con uh, contribution to the coalition operation in the Middle East. So um, these two distinguished officers can feel very, very proud of their contribution to our armed forces and I salute them uh, as they uh, conclude their long and distinguished military careers. Uh, obviously this is a government which takes the defence of Australia very, very seriously indeed. Uh, we are committed to increasing defence spending uh, steadily uh, to 2% of gross domestic product. Uh, we will shortly release the first principles review of defence, which is the most comprehensive reform in decades. Uh, we are continuing to work on the defence white paper which will be released within the next few months. Uh, but um, this is a really effective Australian Defence Force, uh, a very, very effective Australian Defence Force. Uh, it's been in good hands and it will continue to be in the best of hands under uh, Air Marshal Davies and Lieutenant General Campbell. Kevin. Um, thanks, Prime Minister. Can I join with you in welcoming 
uh, and congratulating them on their appointment to uh, Chief of the Air Force and Chief of the Army, uh, Air Vice Marshal Davies and Lieutenant General Campbell. Can also join with you, Prime Minister, in thanking both uh, General Morrison uh, and uh, Air Marshal Brown for the service that they gave the Defence Forces and in particular the Army uh, and the Air Force over their term as Chief of those respective services. Uh, there's an important compact between the nation and the Defence Forces and the strength of that compact is reflected in the leadership uh, of the services and in these two gentlemen taking the Chief's position of both Air Force and the Army. Uh, that is a reflection of the strength of that compact uh, and a, a reflection of the continued importance that we as a government place on the ADF and the way in which they serve us in this nation. Prime Minister, I'd also like to take this chance to formally thank Dave Morrison and Jeff Brown for their years of dedicated service and, more importantly, their last couple of years as great Chiefs of Army and Chiefs of Air Force. Uh, they've been very, very, very strong supporters uh, of reform and uh, Army and Air Force are in a far better shape now than what they were a number of years ago and I want to see that continue. I take the chance to congratulate Lieutenant General Campbell, Air Vice Marshal Davies on their new appointments. With these two appointments, that finalises the new command team in the Defence Force. It's a command team that I'll have, I have every confidence in, and it's a command team that I know is going to be positioned to confront the challenges that we have over the next couple of years, predominantly in the reform space, but also in the operations space as well. Thank you. OK, we might take questions on these appointments and on military matters, and then uh, our service chiefs will withdraw, and if there are any other questions, we'll take them then. So what now happens with Operation Southern Borders? Will you appoint a new military chief, or is it going to move to the civilian field? Uh, we'll have more to say early next week on that subject. Prime Minister, the Americans announced overnight that uh, <coughs> the coalition is taking part in airstrikes around mm -hmm. Tikrit. Mm -hmm. I assume this also means that Australian aircraft are taking part in strikes around Tikrit. If this is the case, does this mean that Australia is now working hand in hand with Shia militias? We are working hand in hand with the Iraqi government. Uh, that's what we set out to do when we committed uh, our air component to the coalition campaign. We set out to work hand in hand with the Iraqi government uh, to do what we could to help the Iraqi government to regain control of its own country and to uh, disrupt, degrade and ultimately destroy the ISIL or Daesh death cult uh, which is reaching out to even here uh, in Australia. So uh, we're doing what we've always done. We are working constructively and effectively with the Iraqi government. CDF, if you can give any sort of guidance on if you, how you go about working with uh, Shia uh, militias. So any, any request for coalition air will come from the Iraqi government and it's in support of the Iraqi government that we do it. Well, I think the request has come with the realisation that the forces in place can't take to creep without some air support, and without, without all the coalition working together in support of the Iraqi forces. Two serious complications in, this, in, the, in that to Crete has a civilian population still, or does it? Uh, well, I think the majority of the population has moved out, but, but any targeting and any strikes that the coalition air will do always takes into account minimising reducing any collateral damage or any civilian casualties. So that won't change. Uh, and if you look at what's happened uh, across Iraq so far, the civilian casualties have been very minimal because we've been very structured in the way we approach this and have very tight rules of engagement. And uh, we abide by laws of armed conflict and all that goes with that. If we're in a serious hurdle now in, in terms of um, driving IS out of, out of Iraq, it is going to be ensuring that the Shia militias don't start behaving to the Sunnis the way the Sunni militias behaved in the Shia areas. Is there a mechanism to stop that happening, or are you confident it can be avoided? So at government to government level, the Australian government works with the Iraqi government to ensure that uh, our position is, is put forward there. Military to military, any work that we do with the Iraqi security forces always emphasises laws of armed conflict, rules of engagement and protection of civilians. Minister, you, you mentioned, uh, going back to the appointments, that uh, General Morrison had done a lot in driving change in the, in the army uh, particularly. Uh, is that, does that remain a priority for the government and does it remain a, a priority for uh, Lieutenant General uh, um, Campbell? Well, of course it's a priority for the government and for all of the service chiefs, uh, as you'd expect. 
Um, I am incredibly proud of our armed forces. Uh, I think we're all very proud of our armed forces and we want our armed forces to reflect us at our best. Um, of course, uh, members of the armed forces are only human uh, and from time to time uh, even the very best people will sometimes make mistakes. The important thing is uh, that we have the best possible culture, we have the best possible structures, and we have the best possible support for everyone who is trying to do the right thing. Mr. Albert, sorry, with no disrespect to the men that you have appointed today, I can't help but notice there are no women there. When do you think we might have women in such high ranks of the Defence Force? Well, that's uh, uh, steadily happening. Uh, you may or may not have been at the uh, uh, parade for the uh, people who have served in Afghanistan over the last decade or so, and uh, that uh, parade was led by a distinguished veteran of Afghanistan, uh, Major General Wilkie, uh, who of course uh, is female. Now, um, increasingly, uh, right through the ranks of our armed forces, uh, we have women serving. Uh, and they are serving in an ever greater range of roles. So uh, while at the moment the service chiefs are all male, uh, I dare say the time is coming when that might be different. Iran, um, and also to the CDF, look, what contact, indirect or, or direct, have we had with Iran with regards to the coordination of these attacks and, um, and whether um, we're, we're under pressure to join Canada in a in attacking, uh, or you know, attacking, probably the wrong word, uh, but in operating over Syria? We are working wholly and solely with the Iraqi government uh, to support the Iraqi forces. Now, uh, that's what we're doing. We are working with the Iraqi government to support the Iraqi forces, and uh, sure, there are some Shiite militia that are cooperating with the Iraqi security forces in the assault on Tikrit. Uh, but we are working with the Iraqi government and we are supporting the Iraqi security forces. That's what we are doing. Now, uh, uh, we obviously have some contact with the Iranian government uh, because uh, um, they are a sovereign government and from time to time our interests uh, intersect or we have something that we would like of the Iraqi government, uh, of, the, of the Iranian government, sorry. Um, uh, for instance, uh, one of the things that I know we've been talking to the Iranian government over the years about is uh, returning uh, to Iran uh, Iranians who come illegally to this country by boat. So there are a range of issues that we talk to the Iranian government about from time to time. And uh, one of the points that we have uh, made to the Iranian government is that our role in Iraq is wholly and solely to support the Iraqi government uh, to defeat the Daesh death cult. Uh, that's our role in Iraq. Uh, it's not to change the uh, um, uh, structure of the Middle East. Uh, it's not to take sides in um, other fights. It is simply to assist the Iraqi government to, to disrupt, degrade and ultimately destroy the death cult uh, in Iraq itself. Syria. On Syria, yeah. Well, on, on Syria, uh, we've made no decision to broaden our air operations uh, into Syria. I note that the Canadian government has decided to broaden its air operations into Syria, and in so doing, it's joined the Americans uh, and a coalition of uh, Arab members of, uh, uh, of the overall coalition, Jordan, Saudi, uh, the Emirates and I think a number of other Arab countries are also uh, engaged in airstrikes into Syria. We saw massive Jordanian airstrikes into Syria, very effective airstrikes into Syria after the butchery, uh, the unspeakable butchery of that Jordanian pilot. So, look, we've made no decision uh, to extend our airstrikes uh, into Syria, but I should point out that our um, support aircraft, our refueler, uh, and uh, our AWAC aircraft are supporting coalition operations throughout the theatre, and that means we are supporting uh, operations over Syria. We're not actually conducting operations over Syria, but we are certainly supporting operations over Syria, and 
Uh, that's as it should be. Prime Minister, Prime Minister uh, a question on Operation Sovereign Borders that Lieutenant General uh, Campbell may or may not be to help with. Can you confirm reports in Jakarta that uh, a, an asylum boat has been turned back in recent days, 12 people on board? Was that done with the compliance of the new Indonesian government and does it show that, that uh, people smugglers are, are trying to restart their trade? Well, well Mark, I'll, I'll take that question, but I think we might deal with questions that uh, are about the specific announcement today and then I might ask the military uh, to withdraw and, and then I'll deal with that question. Are there any further questions? Could we get that Angus Campbell's view on his strategic direction as far as the uh, Iraq fight against ISIL? If you care to, care to comment. When he takes over as Chief of Army, I think you get a chance to talk to him about that. <laughs> Prime, Minister, Prime Minister, when you made the deployment, you said it would be a case of months and not weeks. Given we're rolling into new Defence Chiefs now, is it more re realistic this will be years and not months? Well, uh, when, I, when the government uh, announced this commitment, uh, we said that we, were, we, would, we would obviously from time to time review its effectiveness, but uh, uh, we would be there for as long as it was necessary to help the Iraqis to uh, disrupt, degrade and ultimately destroy the death cult. So um, this may take quite some time, uh, but uh, our air component has been a very effective uh, part of the overall coalition air campaign. Our special forces have been effectively advising and assisting the Iraqi special forces in recent months and as you know at the moment we are preparing uh, a, uh, um, a, a further training force that will go uh, to Iraq uh, to help train the Iraqi regular army for effective offensive operations later in the year. So look, uh, um, we are a country which takes our responsibilities uh, to the defence of Australia. Uh, to the defence of our interests and values in the wider world seriously, and we'll continue to do that. I have a question for Air Vice Marshal Davies. Is that uh, possible? Well, the, 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 the protocol, I understand, is that uh, uh, Prime Ministers, Ministers and CDF speak at these events, and uh, the uh, distinguished appointees will no doubt talk to you on another occasion. When, when, when they take over, so we don't preempt him taking over as Chief of Air Force. View as well. Je Jeff Brown has expressed general enthusiasm for unmanned uh, technology for the for the RAF. I just wonder if that's uh, if you see that playing a large role in, in, in acquisition during uh, Air Vice Marshal Davies' uh, tenure. I was shared by CDF, and I and I know talking to the incoming Chief of Air Force, he uh, he, he feels the same way. Yeah. Okay. Well, look, uh, I might ask the military chiefs to withdraw. Thanks, 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 so, thanks, much. thanks, thanks so much. Thanks so much.